Look in the man that he will look after you. And the girl has to pay the money. This, this is, is exactly what happens. This is a and man. He need, and he needs to have a salary. Is... With religious commitment is that a lot of the Muslims nowadays don't... This is the problem she had gone with that. The authentic and the non-authentic come up when you type it in. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala rasul al-kareem Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Wa man tabi'a sunnatuhu ila yawm al-deen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome again to this episode I'm your host Ismail Bullock And again today I have with us Shaykh Asim al-Hakim Shaykh Abdurrahim Makati Shaykh Salim al-Amri And Shaykh Dr. Mamdouh Muhammad And we left you in the last episode Of what a Muslim believes and we pretty much summarized the main belief, the most important belief, which is testifying there is no true God worthy of worship except Allah. And then we ended on, which we'll start again today, on the second part of that, which is, وَشَهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ الرَّسُولُ اللَّهِ That I testify that the last and final prophet is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, Dr. Mamdouh. The importance of the second part is, that Muhammad وسلم, is the last messenger or the messenger of Allah. It has many issues to focus on. One is that because we didn't know about Allah except through Muhammad So he is the one who carried the message to us. And this is very important to trust the one who carried the message because everything that he said about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is nothing but the truth. Because if we have some doubts about Muhammad وسلم, that means we'll have some doubts about the message itself. So it's important to bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which also implies that nothing of what Muhammad وسلم, says about the religion is of his own whims and desires. It's only a divine revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it shows us also the importance of following the footsteps of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in order to be because he is the example who explained to us the Quran so we need to follow the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and all the time we cannot say la ilaha illallah and make a pause after that we have to say that Muhammad the one who carried the message for us is his last messenger okay Abdurrahim so as you heard from Dr. Mandur the importance of believing in the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People ask, you know, what are the signs of a prophet or how do you know that he was a prophet? So maybe you could elaborate on this, tell the viewers, how do we know that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a prophet or what makes him special? All of the prophets were given certain signs, miracles, mu'jizat, given by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. They weren't given to ordinary men in order to make his people believe. This is something only Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala did for the prophets. And each prophet had his own miracle. For example, Musa alayhi salam had the issue of the magic being thing at that time, being able to have something that was stronger than magic when his stick turned into the snake. And other things, obviously, when he would separate the sea and others. Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ, may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon him, that he was able to cure and heal people and bring life to the dead because they were into medicine in, during that time. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, his miracle that Allah sent him, subhanAllah, it's still even a miracle today, and that is the Qur'an. And that's how we know he was truthful, because what he came with, because they were so eloquent in the Arabic language, and they paid attention to the Arabic language so much, that when they heard the Qur'an, they immediately knew this couldn't be from a human source. It had to be from a divine source. And that's why so many of his people believed. The majority did. Obviously, in the beginning, there were a few who rejected or wouldn't believe, and later, all of his people became Muslim. And they knew it was a divine source it had to come from. And as we said, it's still even a miracle today, where well, you find, for example, where in our times, when people are into science and things like this, that all of these scientific facts are being proven in the Qur'an. And there's no way that somebody who couldn't read and write himself, alayhi salatu 1,400 years ago could have came up with these type of ideas sitting in the desert of Arabia. So it has to be also a divine source. SubhanAllah, even obviously the non-Muslims who look into his seerah, into his biography, 
and look into his life and they read the Quran, they all realize this too. So that's just one of the things that shows you obviously that he was a prophet. Okay, Sheikh Salim, you mentioned uh, briefly in the first episode the testimony believing Allah that it had certain conditions behind it. So are there conditions as well with the testimony of saying that I bear witness? Is it enough to say I bear witness or are there certain conditions and certain principles that must be followed? There are actually seven conditions pertain to the kalima. Number one is the knowledge, the ilm, that you know the meaning of la ilaha illallah. Number two is certainty, that you are certain and not you are saying it only by lip service. Number three is the acceptance. Accept what this word means and entails. That's why the Arabs they were reluctant in the beginning because they know the consequences, what this word means. Al-ilmu wal yaqeenu wal qabulu wal inqiyadu which means submissiveness. Allah, finish. Allah said this. Allah said, no argument. وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُ عَمْرًا يَكُونَ لَهُمْ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ So when Allah decreed a matter and his prophet, any believing man and believing woman, they have no other option except to accept وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمَ as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. So it is very essential that you submit and this is the meaning of Islam. You surrender, you submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالصِّدْقُ and then truthfulness. Because maybe you are saying it only by your tongue, like the hypocrites. Well, ikhlas and sincerity. You have to be sincere. And finally, love. You love this kalima, and you love whoever says this kalima. So these are seven conditions should be fulfilled regarding the first part of the shahada, which is the tawheed. Regarding Muhammad Rasulullah we have to follow him. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجد في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلموا تسليما الله سبحانه وتعالى is swearing by himself nay by your lord they believe not until they make you judge in all disputes that take place among them and this ayah came down regarding a dispute happened between two of the companions two of the companions so Allah revealed this that they believe not until they make you the judge and accept your judgment and they find not any resistance or opposition for what you have decided. Now you find many Muslims. You tell them Allah says this, they are, they are hesitant. But, but see the Sahabiyat in particular, and the Sahaba, the Sahaba when Allah prohibited the Khamar immediately. They spilt it out, though with the news reached them while they were drinking. drinking. The Ansariyat, as Aisha said, Rahimallah Nisa al Ansar, Lama Nazalat Ayatul Hijab, Ghadawana fi Salat al Ghadah. معتجرات بمروطهن كأن على رؤوسهن الغربان when the ayah about hijab came down the women of the Ansar in the Fajr prayer they were dressed totally in black from head to toes as if they were crows sitting no argument not as today why Islam is saying this why Allah is saying this are you Muslim are you Muslim where is the submission so this is the problem Muslims are saying something and they don't understand it there is no submissiveness if you are a Muslim, that's it. Sami'na wa ata'na. We hear and we obey. You have the option before becoming a Muslim to think and analyze and argue. That's why Islam tells you, don't become a Muslim. Know what Islam is about. Fa'alam annahu la ilaha illallah. Islam is not like any other belief. You become a Muslim the second day you can leave. Sorry, you cannot leave once you become a Muslim. So take your time. Study Islam because it's the only way of salvation. So you live this life in a state of this submission. So also I would like to add about Muhammad Rasulullah He has many rights upon his followers. Before you mention something about Sheikh Salim, just in a reflecting on the ayah which you mentioned, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ رَسُولُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُنُ مَنْ خِيرُدُ أَمْرِهِمْ Yeah, this ayah, subhanAllah, the, the strength of it, if any true believer hears this, it shows you one of the realities of Muhammad Rasulullah. That Muhammad is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah mentioned in the Sunday that he has decreed that it's not up to a believing male or female. And as the scholars of tafsir mentioned, that when it says mu'min and mu'mina, when it brings both of them, because it would just be enough to say mu'min. When he brings the woman too, it's saying you pay extra careful attention to what's about to be said, because it's very, very important. He said it's not up to them to have the choice in their affair if Allah and His Messenger have passed a ruling in something. 
And what you mentioned is some people say nowadays they'll be like, you know, and you tell them Allah said this, the Messenger of Allah said this, you know, but I think or I believe this and my opinion is this, right? Changing and going directly against the order of the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger of Allah. And it's interesting how the ayah ends. Whoever goes away from it, that whoever disobeys Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, He's not just going astray. He's going to a strainess that is mubin, a clear, clear strainess. Subhanallah. Well, we'll just talk there. We're going for a break now. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Wishing all the viewers of Peace TV a blessed month of Ramadan. To uplift Iman, Iman, every believer should have, should have. If we really want to establish success in our lives, an eagerness to learn about Islam, a desire to correct wrongs, be firm in your belief, in our belief of Tawheed, the thirst to avoid evil, focus on Allah, He won't let us down, and put all of our faith, and the passion to follow our Creator, all of our hope, all of our trust, and Almighty Allah, Imam Qasim Khan, Allah is our help, we have to totally internalize, Imbibe the essentials to keep a regular check on our Iman in Strengthening Your Iman tomorrow at 7 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. Islam prohibits killing of innocent human beings. Every day, innocent human beings are being killed in different parts of the world. Most religions condemn the killing of innocent human beings. But Islam goes a step further and says in the glorious Quran, Surah Al-Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, If anyone kills a human being, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it would be as if he has killed the whole of humankind. It does not stop here, but continues. And if anyone saved a single human life, it would be as if he has saved the life of the entire humankind. Remember, please do not kill a single innocent human being, but rather save the whole of humankind by saving human lives. Human life is precious. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back. Before the break, we just touched upon the importance of following and submitting to Allah and the Prophet Muhammad commands and orders. And just before we finished, Brother Abdurrahim elaborated on that particular verse. And Sheikh Salam was about to go into the rights the Prophet وسلم, has over us. Yes, the Prophet وسلم, has many rights over us. And uh, the Prophet, وسلم, as Allah tells us, that وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ لَوَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ He doesn't speak out of his own desires, except that he is inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us and commands us, وَمَا أَتَاكُمَ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ Whatever the Prophet ﷺ commands you, take it, and whatever he forbids you, abstain from it. So, among the rights of the Prophet ﷺ is the tawqeer, reverence, respect. Among his rights is to love him more than yourself, more than your children. And the true love of the Prophet ﷺ is by following his footsteps. This is the touchstone. The touchstone is that, that you follow his footsteps. Because many people down there, they claim that we love the Prophet So how you manifest this love when you are not following his sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa So it is very essential that you submit. And this is the meaning of Islam. You surrender, you submit to the will 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Was sidqu and then truthfulness. Because maybe you are saying it only by your tongue, like the hypocrites. Was sidqu, well, ikhlas and sincerity. You have to be sincere. And finally, love. You love this kalima and you love whoever says this kalima. So these are seven conditions should be fulfilled regarding the first part of the shahada, which is the tawheed. Regarding Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have to follow him. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتُ وَيُسَلِّمُ Taslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing by himself, nay, by your Lord. They believe not until they make you judge in all disputes that take place among them. And this ayah came down regarding a dispute happened between two of the companions. Two of the companions. فَعْصِ الْإِلَاهَ وَأَنْتَ تَزْعُ مُحِبَّهُ هَذَا بِعْلَعْمْرِ فِي الْقِيَاسِ بَدِيعُ لَوْ كَانَ حُبُّكَ صَادِقًا لَا أَطَعْتَهُ إِنَّ الْمُحِبَّ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّكَ مُطِيعُ So the real person really who loves someone, he will obey whomever he loves. So if you love the Prophet ﷺ, you follow his footsteps. So this is among the rights of the Prophet ﷺ. Loving his sunnah, defending his sunnah, defending the Qur'an, the rights of the Prophet ﷺ. And inshallah the mashayikh will so come probably You see this, I always uh, tell my students that when you see somebody in, in the, uh, when it comes to, like football, they love a football star, you see they wear his jersey, it's, they're not even from his country, and you have like a Brazil flag, an Argentinian flag. They know his flag, whole history. His whole history, because there's love there. So they say we love the Prophet, it's inside, it's in the heart. But it's, it never shows in the actions, and this is a real believer, obviously you're going to see it in his actions as well. It's not just enough, obviously, to say that you love him and in your heart. The secret that. of the love that it cannot be hidden. Exactly. If they have love, love will show. You don't hide love. But the, nowadays, there is a lot of pressure on Muslims by the media, by sometimes even their parents and their families. So they are in between this pressure and showing the love of the Prophet ﷺ. Where is the Muslim situation? And I think one of the key things to defending the Prophet ﷺ is not to just yeah, they go out, like some people, want, they want to go out and have demonstrations and like this. And there might be some good in some of this. It sends a message. However, the point is, is that the key thing to defend the Prophet is acting upon his sunnah. When you act upon his That's sunnah, and his manners, his akhlaq, it shows up in your actions. And people see you, why you do what you do as a Muslim, why you live like this as a Muslim. It's because I'm following the way, the methodology, the ideology of Prophet Muhammad This is the greatest effect when it comes to defending him, the greatest way to defend him, alayhi salatu wasalam. You hear a lot of people saying, which is connected to what they were just, Sheikh Salam and Sheikh Abdurrahim were just mentioning, saying that Prophet was a warmonger, he was aggressive, he was violent, he used to massacre people, he used to do all this kind of thing. But we see, as Muslims, I mean, we who read the seerah, and we always invite people, it's an open book, you know, we don't have a secret life of Muhammad, which is hidden, for, it's, you can buy it from any bookstore. But can you maybe give us some examples to show that of the Prophet of his extreme mercy, as Allah said, he is rahmatun lil alameen, he is a mercy to mankind. So could you really tell us the reality of the Prophet Muhammad? Was he aggressive? Was he this harsh man? They have unfortunately shown, and I had to have seen by chance one of these cartoons, and to be honest, it actually brought me to tears when I saw this actual cartoon that they sang was the Prophet Muhammad Bismillah, wa ma'ad. We have to put certain points clear to everyone whether we're addressing Muslims or non-Muslims. For those who are non-Muslims and they do these horrific drawings and say these bad things about our Prophet ﷺ, I'll say to them and I address them usually by saying, do whatever pleases you. At the end of the day, you will die and people will forget you like they have forgotten every single tyrant and every single bad person on earth. No one will remember you. No one would even say, oh, he was a good guy or even he was a bad guy. He, they will go into the trash of history, as we say it in Arabic. I will tell them, no matter what you say or do about the Prophet والسلام, Allah has exalted his name. Nowhere on earth a minute would pass by without mentioning the Prophet's name, Muslim or non-Muslim countries. Nowhere on earth, because we know that the adhan, the call for prayer, is called five times a day. And it is dependent on the movement of the sun. So as the sun rises and sets, the adhan is being called. And every single adhan, 
you have to say ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah you clear this testimony with loudspeakers without loudspeakers on the rooftops of masjid on your houses in the desert in the farm every minute of the day and night worldwide his name is being exalted sallallahu alaihi wasallam and you cannot do anything about it so eat your heart out there's nothing is going to affect our prophet alaihi wasallam for the muslims we tell them that when we say the shahada in our daily lives in the salat we say wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh look at these two parameters that he is the servant and slave of allah okay so what's new and he is the messenger of allah and these two parameters set the mindfold of a muslim belief in the prophet alaihi wasallam so we look at the muslims we find those who go to extreme and they are disrespectful to allah and to the prophet alaihi wasallam when they say that he was created from the light of allah he is the light of allah he is the one who takes the orders of allah and controls the universe he knows the unseen these are all divine attributes that can only be attributed to allah muslims don't do this we believe he's the slave and servant of allah azza wajalla but on the other hand there are extremes who say who is muhammad he's just like us he's a normal human being he does this he does that akhi he is not a normal human being in the sense that he's the perfection of human being form he was given so many attributes sallallahu alaihi wasallam beside his message so as a human being he's the perfect one with the message of allah azza wajalla no one can come close to him so you have to have this balance to the non muslims eat your heart out to the muslims you cannot be a proper servant of allah until you acknowledge his status alayhi salatu wassalam and that is why a lot of the muslims complain why can't we find this tranquility and submissiveness in prayer why can't we enjoy our prayer i'll tell you why the prophet says alayhi salatu wassalam three qualities if a muslim has them in him he will find the sweetness of iman so iman has sweetness okay what are these qualities one to love allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam more than anything else and without this love when you just think of a prophet sallam as a teacher people call him ya muallim no he's not a teacher he's not a teacher he is far greater than a teacher he is sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam the mercy sent to humanity to mankind to the whole world so you have to love him and you cannot love him without knowing him without seeing how he suffered for us and you can't love him without respecting what he says someone tells you the prophet says alayhi salatu wassalam so and so you say what did imam abu hanifa say what did imam ahmed ibn hanbal say akhi i tell you the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam says so and so and you're asking me about this and that this shows you the impact and the level of iman that reminds me exactly what you said there reminds me of the time that uh, ibn abbas went to a man and said to him rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this and he said abu bakr said this and umar said this and he said i say to you rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says this and you say abu bakr and umar and he said i fear now the sky will down upon us for that kind of statement so that's very interesting we just added something here which is the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said la tatruni kama atrat an-nasara isa ibn maryam inma ana 'abd fa qulu 'abdullah wa rasuluhu do not over praise me as the christians did with jesus christ so say am the servant of allah any points to add to yeah i wanted to add to the an example an evidence on some of them may be deviant still the love of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there so the exact fox morning news one day this was a few years back they used to have in the morning they would ask a question and after 2 or 3 minutes they would come up with the answer and the question they raised that what is the most famous name in the world and they mentioned mary john and muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they didn't say sallallahu alaihi wasallam of course they just said the name and after 2 or 3 minutes they came to declare to the people in the world yeah, that the most famous name in the world is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this was not a surprise for us as muslims because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the quran himself he said wa rafa'na laka dhikrak indeed we raised your name and your reputation high among people and this is a sign of the love of the muslim that's why almost in every family There's you will find the name muhammad and they have three or four people named muhammad one of them is called muhammad and the other one is muhammad and the third one is muhammad yes with all the vowels 
combination. In Nigeria, they have Muhammad al-Awwal, the first, Muhammad al-Thani, the second, the second and Muhammad al I mean, even the, before, I mean, we're running out of time, unfortunately, but even, just to end, really, even in the UK now, recently, at one of the newspapers, uh, about a month or two ago, they said that the most popular, common name of the male children in the UK is now Muhammad, subhanAllah. Anyway, we've come to the end of another great episode, and to the viewers, obviously, we emphasized in this episode the importance of not just saying that you believe in the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, but really implementing that and following him. And we heard verses like, In kuntum Allaha, yughhbukum that say that if you do truly love Allah, then follow me, meaning the Prophet Muhammad, and Allah will forgive you your sins. And he will love you and forgive you your sins. And until we join you again on another great episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.